Ready? Ready. Okay. <laughs> so welcome back. We are here again with uh, David Mike Brown that, that just came off a an amazing Rally America season winning the Open Lights Championship and the overall Rally America Championship. And, and guys, wanted to have another conversation with you about how you got to the point where you were even running a full season. Because you've been, you know, uh, driving on dirt running rally for a little while, but probably in the grand scheme of things, not really a long time. Yeah. So maybe let's let's start by just kind of talking about your progression. Like, where, what was the first, like, or what got you into, you know, driving a Subaru, trying to go fast on dirt to the point where now you ran a whole Rally America season? Yeah, so I started just a few years ago, uh, met some friends at work uh, who did rally cross, And, you know, I've seen rally on TV, but I, as far as I was concerned, it was too expensive. It was nothing right. I would ever do. <laughs> right. And uh, when it started, I just wanted to get a ride with them. And okay. so a couple friends took me for rides and rally crosses, and that was really cool. And then I had a buddy that let me drive his car. We dual entered, so we take okay. turns driving. And uh, that would, of course, like, oh. <laughs> so was that with, with Colorado Rallycross? Uh, yeah, Colorado Rallycross. Okay. And it was in a bone stock 1.8 liter Subaru. So, so let's talk, so what is Rallycross? Like, if you, if you show up to that event, what, like, what, is, what are you doing with the car that day? Yeah, so Rallycross is uh, mostly people with stock cars. Some people have fancy cars, but in general, it's just daily drivers. And it's in a dirt field, and they okay. set up a course with cones. Okay. And so it's relatively low speed, you generally don't get out of second gear, and uh, very safe, easy on the car, right. uh, but an incredible amount of fun. So it's kind of like an autocross, but on dirt, exactly. it's rally cross. Yep. And, and so that's how you got started, and that's what got you the bug then. Yep. Okay. And then uh, I had a daily driver, and people kept trying to convince me to take that out, but it was a little bit too nice, I thought. Okay. And then... Uh, I gotta ask. Yeah. So, does that happen to be what is currently the rally car? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So All I didn't right. resist too long. <laughs> so, we, yeah. so, so even your current rally car went from daily driver to rally cross car to full stage rally car. Yeah, actually, I don't know that I, I ever rally, rally cross. Oh, really? It because okay. I was rally crossing my buddy's car. Okay. And uh, it was just really fun to drive the same car. Okay. And then uh, the. Hill Climb series, which is the okay. next progression, okay. came up, and uh, yeah, I wasn't so, even going to do that. My buddy Brad Ames, who made this yeah, trophy, yeah. Uh, said, no, I can cage it, it'll only take us two weeks. <laughs> so you went from Rallycross to the Hill Climbs? Yep. Okay, so let's talk about what are the Hill Climbs then? So Hill Climb uh, is mostly a different format, but generally it is uphill. Okay. Uh, it's one road that you run all weekend. Uh, you do three to four runs on Saturday qualifying and just practicing, getting okay. to know the road. And then Sunday you get two runs and it's your single fastest run okay. that counts. So it's on, on one road and so it's basically, it's kind of like a single rally stage that you're working on for the weekend. Yeah. Correct. Okay. And it is full high speed. You have yeah. to have a cage, all the safety gear. So it's pretty legit. And that was also the first time that a co-driver got in the car. Gotcha. Because yeah. So they have with notes. Yeah. So was that the? Because uh, they have a rally car class for the hill climbs. So that's that's probably what what class you're running in. So that's what yep. brought the co-driver along. Yep. So that so Mike, that's when you got roped into this. I jumped in. Okay. That's when he asked if I would like to co-drive, and I okay. was like, yeah. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> Very cool. And and fortunately here in Colorado, so I mean, when you think hill climbs, there you know, for people that are not in Colorado, you probably think of you know Pikes Peak hill climb. Of course, that's near and dear to our hearts. The Wash yeah. Washington. Um, Mount Washington hill climb, but there's a lot of hill climbs in Colorado. There's there's a whole series of hill climbs. Right. Um, so there actually is a series in, in Colorado that, that does a lot of events. Yeah, and the series is all dirt roads. We're right. Pikes Peaks paved now, yeah. so it's a totally different animal. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, these are all dirt. So how many? So so you went from rallycross to doing some hill climbs. How many hill climbs did you do before you started thinking about? maybe trying to do an actual stage rally event. We did one, we did one season of hill climbs. Okay. And then we did, last year we did three stage rallies and then we did some hill climbs along with it. Okay. So yeah, we dove in pretty quick. So was, so was last year, so 2017, was that the first year that you really started, it sounds like first did a stage rally, mm -hmm. yep. but then you really kind of started to kind of piece together a season, to like use the car and try and 
hit you know multiple events in a year yeah and we we didn't know anything about it and to us and to anyone that does this your first stage rally you complete just finishing is the most ridiculous accomplishment yeah. you've ever done like you can't believe how many miles and how hard you've driven and the terrain you've gone over and you're in a streetcar essentially right. and it's it's hard to believe it's even possible until you do it right and so yeah the first season was just like holy crap we right. did it man but but so what was it about so when you got to stage rally you know obviously this year for 2018 that's pretty much where you set your focus yep. was, was running was running stage rally so what was it about you know between the rally cross versus doing the hill climbs versus the stage rally what was it about the stage rally that really made you think you know this is it this is what i want to put all my energy towards yeah so it's one it's a miracle just to do it and in one single rally you do as many miles as you do an entire hill climb series. Okay. The roads are essentially blind. You've got right. to drive them one time in a streetcar just to confirm your notes. Right. Uh, so the skill from both driver and co-driver of being able to hit right the first time is just a whole nother level. Hmm. And yeah, when you're done, it's so intense. It's all you want to do. Right. <laughs> yeah definitely kind of like the peak of, of testing your abilities as a driver in, in a co-driver. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. It's, uh, there's nothing like it, uh, even compared to like road course driving where you're trying to nail the perfect lap, lap, mm -hmm. lap after lap. Uh, we're trying to go into a million turns that we've never seen before right. and be as close to perfect as we can <laughs> right. without crashing. Right. And right. The, of course the roads are lined with trees. So yeah. in cliffs and ravines, so there's uh, there's some stakes at play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and so uh, Mike, for you as a co-driver, I mean, how how much of a challenge was it to do a hill climb event versus a stage rally event? I mean, it sounds like because of the different stages and, and, and the unknown conditions, it sounds like for a co-driver too, stage rally is going to be a much different animal than than just a hill climb. Yeah, because in hill climb, because it's just your fastest lap or your fastest time from yeah. start to finish that if I screw up one, it's not the end of the world because there's another right. one. Right. Um, but whereas stage rallies, every single stage counts. So you have to nail every stage and be on the note so he can drive up to his highest potential. Right. Because if you screw up one stage really badly, it could screw up your entire sure. rally if there's 12 stages or 15 stages. Right. So it's a lot more intense. Um, with all the practices on hill climbs, you can practice your notes over and over again right. on the practice and qualifying day. So you're already comfortable, you kind of know the course, you know your timing already. Whereas stage rally, you can watch videos and practice, but you're not actually in the car until you're actually racing the stage. Right. And driving it at 30 miles per hour in a rental car is much different than sure full speed in a rally car. For sure. Plus all the uh, transits and the timekeeping and keeping the whole team yeah. on the schedule. Yeah. Right. Yeah, there, there's, there's a, a lot more to it. There's a lot. There's a lot to being a co-driver for for a, a stage rally. Yeah. Yeah. For there's sure. there's been people that have lost because they get lost on transit. Mm -hmm. Where a hill climb, you just drive right back down the road. You right. Just came up. Right. So, right. It's very easy. Up, yeah. down. Hard to hard to get it mixed up. Yep. <laughs> Man. Well, so so going back, I mean, obviously, I mean, stage rally is kind of where your passion is now. Mm -hmm. What would you say that there was definitely a, a progression in skills and experience from you know something as simple as rally cross where you're just driving around basically a, a cone course on dirt into hill climb and then into a full stage rally oh yeah uh even just within rally cross you know i have like a dirt biking background mm -hmm. and i've done off-roading and so i'm like oh i ought to be pretty good at this right and you go out there with those guys that have been doing it for years and you just get killed right right <laughs> and so even just within rally cross you know you learn a lot of skills for that and then you step up to the hill climb and the speed makes it a totally different sport sure and uh, just through the few events we did there really learned a lot of skills and got a lot more confidence and mm -hmm. you know at those kind of speeds and with the wrists involved trying to get near the edge is a, a difficult thing to do sure and uh and so we developed that skill and then, yeah, slowly went on to rallies. So would you, I mean, because you've had a relatively quick path to having, you know, running successful events and even a successful season, yeah. it seems like maybe there is really some significance in that progression going from rally cross to hill climbs 
kind of honing your abilities in what is basically a single stage, and then taking those skills and applying them to multiple different stages. Yeah, absolutely. And even the development of a car, uh, yeah. once you start putting uh, different diffs in it and yeah. uh, stuff like that, the car uh, becomes much more of a rally weapon. And you've got to kind of build your skills to be prepared for that. Okay. Uh, it would be difficult to jump into the end product and be able to drive it fast. It would just be right. too much car for you. Right. Uh, so as we built the car, while we got driving experience, it really uh, kind of helped us along that whole progression. So the car developed equally as, as the driver developed? Yeah, we kind of push it and be like, okay, now I can tell, I can feel that this wheel is spinning or that wheel right. is spinning. And that's when we go, okay, now we're ready for some diffs. We throw right. those in and then uh, the car would handle totally different. We'd get used to that and we'd start pushing that and then we kept, you know, building. Yeah. And with a focus really on handling and not just throwing a big motor at the car. Sure. And, and part of that was, was the class that you were building the car towards. Where, mm -hmm. You know, because you had a, a much lower cap on, on what you could do power-wise. Right. But, you know, from, from a handling standpoint, that's, that's where you were able to really bring a lot to the car and develop it. Yeah. And we stuck with the stock motor, stock computer, uh, through all of the hill climb series, and even through the beginning of this year, and uh, some of the motors mid-year, we ended right. up going back to stock. Okay. And so even with the stock motor, we were successful. Uh, we won Rally Colorado overall on a stock motor. Um, we did extremely well at Ohio this year with the mm -hmm. stock motor. And so really focusing on the skills and the car and the handling mm -hmm. really made a big difference. Well, and which is, I mean, it obviously did because you guys had a great season. Um, but I mean, it, it, I'd say kind of going in that progression, um, that that basically forces you to progress that way. You know, develop the car in small increments, but as you, the driver, are, are learning to, to use that same car in fine speed, then that's where the driver skill increases. Oh, yeah. And we had some amazing drivers we were racing against. Mm -hmm. So there was always this one or two guys that would be like just one second ahead of you, two yeah. seconds. And it was just yeah. like... Oh, it's, but it's a good motivator. Yeah, like, so try and find that extra speed. Yeah, so we were always pushing to go get these guys. <laughs> yeah, so so going back, like because you know, hopefully some people watching this are wanting to get into stage rally. You know, they they're familiar with it. That's what their end goal is. Sure. And like, say they get into rallycross. What are what are maybe maybe some couple tips or or some mindsets to have as you go into just a simple rallycross, to to kind of work on to get you ready for going to the hill climb. Yeah, it's, uh, there's lots of things you can work on. Really, the cool thing about Rallycross is you can slowly work on your car without having this huge expense up front. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, handling is really key. And then yeah. also uh, simple things that you can do that don't cost any money, like weight savings. Sure. Uh, you can build yourself a skid plate. Uh, our, our car started with a skid plate that we made from a road sign mm -hmm. that I found in a field that was abandoned yeah. out there. And so... <laughs> So there's little things you can do and like slowly build your car up. Okay, and then as you move from rally cross to a hill climb, what are, what do you what do you think would be some things to focus on to maybe uh, help to hone your skills to get ready for a stage rally, or maybe some some signs to to tell you that okay, I am now ready to look at moving to an actual stage rally from just doing a, a hill climb. Uh, I think the biggest thing to work on is is the turns really. Like a lot of people. One, they want to pitch the car as sideways as they can because it looks cool on TV. And really, it's not the fast way around a turn. So you see a lot of guys like over brake and get sliding, and then they lose all their speed. Mm -hmm. And then they just want to stand on the gas and you know see how fast the car will go down the straight. Mm -hmm. Where really, if you'd worked on the handling and like trying to get a nice smooth line through the turn, carry as much speed, that's when you're really starting to get those times down. And then when you get onto that straightaway, you start at a much higher speed. Sure. Yeah. And. Uh, and so it's really surprising some of these we come off the turn so fast that now we're really moving by the next turn right. and then you got to start thinking of brakes and stuff like that okay um, but really kind of that confidence uh, where you don't feel like you're out of control in the turns you're not mm -hmm. sliding wide about to go off each mm -hmm. turn because there's much fewer surprises in, in the course <laughs> of each each run yeah exactly because if you're doing that at a hill climb where you're running the same road over and over mm -hmm. once you get to a stage rally that's blind your, right. your risk level goes sure up. well and with the hill climbs that's where then a, a co-driver comes in mm -hmm. right yep. so then you have to start learning to work with the co-driver yep. um so mike 
that that was your first experience co-driving, right? Was in the hill climbs. Correct. So, how long do you think it took you, or how many events, till you really kind of felt comfortable in that co-driver role? There's only a few events I felt. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he was also kind of he was new hearing the notes too. Sure. So it was kind of we had to figure it out together how sure. he wanted to hear them. Right. And in hill climbs, we write our own notes. Right. So we aren't supplied stage notes or anything. So we started writing our own notes. So we both were learning at the same time because he had to write, call out the notes for me to write down yeah. during recce and stuff. Yeah, and I had luckily co-driven before at a few stage rallies okay. for another guy, uh, which is another thing that helped me get into it. Okay. Uh, but because of that, I'd been reading notes, so I kind of knew about what sure. a turn looked like and what it should be called. So I think that helped a little bit when we got into it. I wasn't guessing at it. Um, well, I was a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I at least had a baseline to sort of compare it sure, to. Sure, sure. Yeah. Interesting. Well, and, and actually, yeah, co-driving. That, that, I would never have thought of that, but that's that's probably a really great way to get into, like, to get a window into what rally is, what stage rally is. Oh, yeah. I mean, Mike can tell you that once you do that, you get a feel for it. You know the background of it mm -hmm. uh, um, as far as how the event operates and all that really goes into it. And so it really is uh, a good way to start. Yeah. Well, I, I would say, you know, for the hill climbs where you're going to be reliant on or using a co-driver, especially stage rally where you're going to be using a co-driver, having that good cohesive relationship between driver and co-driver is really important. So. If you're if you're starting to get to that point where you need a co-driver uh, to work with for the hill climbs, even picking the right person and, and really having a good relationship there is probably pretty key. Oh yeah, it's huge. Yeah. And a lot of people are scared when they get into uh, needing a co-driver, especially if you're writing your own notes. Mm -hmm. And one thing I'll tell people is don't be afraid of it. Even if you start out and you know nothing, one, you can either borrow someone's notes or if you start out and all you say is, this is a tight left versus a medium left and an open left. Like, mm -hmm. just break it down that simple, right? And and you'll slowly refine it from there. Sure. Well, very cool. And and it, kind of one of the other things that it sounds like, just just looking at kind of the progression of broad strokes is yeah. is to really focus on on the driving skill. So mm -hmm. not to not focus so much on the car, as much as on you know the driver skill for you know using the car but you know, getting through the whole weekend and then co-driver yeah. skills too once once the co-driver comes in because oh, yeah. would you it, it would seem like you can have the like if, if somebody just gifted you a, a perfectly set up wrc rally car yeah. but you have no rally stage experience from a co-driver <laughs> or driver standpoint well. <laughs> yeah you would, not, you would not be fast it would probably not be fun and yeah. it might end upside down or, or something yeah like. that would be an expensive day <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, so really focusing on those skill sets of the driver and the co-driver is a really important piece of the puzzle as you're, if you're wanting to get into rally, you know, it just at every stage. Yeah, and like we talked about previously, the, our car is set up the same no matter what the rally is at yeah. this point. I just don't know any better. Yeah. And really, I think that's been useful because I can really work on how I drive to adapt to all sure. the different terrain. Adapt as the driver versus trying to change the car to get it so that the driver doesn't have to adapt. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and like you were saying uh, previously too, that the as the co-driver, the way that you deliver the notes, the way that you think about the notes, that's something you actually have to learn to adapt based on conditions, based on how the car is working, that sort of thing too. Yeah, and it's different for every driver how they want to hear it, and it's just something that we work together every race, and yeah. there may be small changes here and there yeah. that I'll write down in the pace notes that. If we're, especially if we're repeating a stage, that there was it'd be quicker here or this because, and as your speed goes and as our speeds picked up, I've mm -hmm. had to be earlier and earlier because yeah. the turns yeah. come up faster and sure. faster and faster. Yeah. So it's adjusting that tempo for the conditions, the course, whether it's just a wide open course, right, or it's a super tight technical course like Rally Colorado. So it's always you're always changing your tempo and trying to deliver them perfectly for how he wants to hear them. Right. So that's that's. Some really great advice. It's something if you if you're starting to work with a co-driver, it, it's not just well. It, at first, it's just left right, but yeah. then it's it's it, you're thinking way beyond just simple left and right directions. There's a lot. There's a lot to that. The job of the co-driver. Yes. Oh yeah. 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 It's everything is huge, and how we've worked it out has just worked out amazingly for us. Yeah. 
Uh, he's very good at what he does, and uh, he's very good at understanding that he needs to give it how I want to hear it, so I'll ask for something, timing or whatever, and right. he's just very good at adapting and uh, being able to pick up on that, so it's worked out awesome. awesome. Yeah, because ideally, if a perfect call out for a turn, he knows exactly the entire turn. He could paint it out and draw it right. out before he's even in the turn. Right. He'll know what's on the inside, what's on the outside. The entry, the midpoint, and the exit, he knows exactly. He'll know what's coming up after that, so he'll change his exit to link the next turn. Yeah. So if he can visualize the turn before he even hits it, then he's going to be able to drive it to his max. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's, maybe that's another underlying theme, like once you get to a hill climb, is to realize that there, there is no one person that is going to be like the main one in charge. It, it is a team in that car. Oh, yeah. the, you know, the driver and the coder have to work as a unit. Yeah, especially stage rallies. I mean, hill climb, you could have someone sit there and not say anything, and you'd right. eventually start learning the road and memorize sure. it. But in stage rally, you don't have that option. It's right. hundreds of miles of roads, and right. you're, I'm totally dependent on him. Right. You know, he, yeah. he gives me the wrong call, and it could be a bad day. Right. <laughs> yeah, we're both in the car together, so I right. have to rely on him not to wad us up, but he right. has to rely on me to make the call totally right. right. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, we, we're both in the car, and if one of us messes up in a, the wrong place, it could sure. Bad things can it's happen. Bad day for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and Dave, you had mentioned something earlier that, that I think is worth touching on, is that something to the effect that as you start to get comfortable with driving on dirt, that you start driving a little bit differently, and then you're more aware of, it, like if you're starting with a stock car, more aware of where now that stock car is deficient. Right. What are... If there's if there's a couple points like where you kind of really hit that that precipice where you need to then make a kind of significant change to the setup, you know, diffs being a big one of those. Yeah. What are some of those telltale signs? Do you think? Uh, well, it really all comes down to awareness of the driver, and in some ways, not having all the cool parts helps you because you're trying to drive the best you can with what you've got. Sure. And then once you're aware of, okay, I'm not pulling out of the turn as hard as I want, but not only that, but I can tell it's the left front wheel when I'm going right. around a left turn, right. or it's the back wheel, or whatever the situation is. Now, when you make the mod, you know, I am putting the diff in because this specific thing is happening, right. and I want to stop that. Right. And so I think progressing as a driver and doing the mods to kind of progress with you is important. Okay. So when, when you start to really be able to tell where the car is not working the way that you want it to. Yeah. And because and then figuring out why it isn't working, that'll tell you what part you need to change. And then once you put it in, then you know what to look for to make sure that it's moving in the right direction, that it's making the desired change. Absolutely. And I think that a lot of the higher end things like diffs, some of the high end diffs, they're very aggressive. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people get started and they're like, I need to build the best car, put the diffs in, do this, do that. And they get a car that is so aggressive and twitchy that it makes it harder for them to drive and mm -hmm. probably harder to learn how to drive. Gotcha. And so I feel like really helped us going through that progression, me as a driver and the car building up at the same time. Yeah. I'm guessing for you, Mike, as the car gets faster, if you're if you're co-driving, you know, with the same driver, you can actually feel the car behaving differently and you start to get a sense for how you need to deliver the information to the driver mm -hmm. differently. Yeah, I think one you know, race was a hill climb. I think that was Land's End we just had the rear diff in. Oh yeah. So we just put in the rear diff and it just made the, the tail end just unpredictable. Mm. And yeah, I definitely noticed that one in the passenger seat and co-driver seat and yeah he was almost scared to drive the car because of how unpredictable it made it yeah that was not a fun race <laughs> right sure but because we were more aware of what was happening and i did just that i knew right. why it was doing it and then we were able to balance it out with the front diff later on and gotcha. uh, so yeah well and it's it there's one other thing i want to touch on which is not maybe the funnest thing to touch on but things don't always go right mm -hmm. you know so yeah. there, there's pretty relatively low stakes at a rally cross. You know, it's, it's something where, you know, maybe it's the worst case is it's your daily driver that you have some kind of something to break. Right. But as you get to a hill climb, um, problems can be you know, more significant. And with stage rally, I mean, sky's the limit for how bad things can go. Yeah. As you're kind of working through that progression, I mean, how do you how do you kind of deal with the problems that come up? Maybe maybe it's something as simple as set up to just fall on you know, issues with the car. 
Yeah, we've unfortunately had a lot of practice at dealing with issues, uh, yeah. especially this year. Um, yeah. And crashing also. Last year, we damaged the car badly, and uh, he broke his back in three places. Two, two, two places. places. Jeez. And, uh, yeah, working through that, you got to have that commitment, like I said before, to want to keep going. Um, mm. After the crash, the biggest thing, I thought I was done racing. Mm. You know, here I thought I'd permanently hurt my brother. Maybe yeah. he was going to be paralyzed. I didn't know. I was going through worst-case scenarios. Sure. And um, the cost of rebuilding the car, you know, it was a lot to get the car to where it was. And I right. thought it was just prohibitive. Right. Um, but he fought through it, and it was really... Yeah in my mind, a big deal that if he was willing to get back into it, we needed to end on a good note. Mm -hmm. So I asked him if he wanted to get back into it, and he never even hesitated and said, heck yeah, let's go do it again. So then at that point, I was 100% committed and right. uh, put the car back together, and he put himself back together in yeah. seven weeks, Jeez. and then we ran the Monarch Hill Climb. Uh, so yeah, crashing is bad, especially if it's a major wreck to the car and right. it hurts somebody. Sure. Um, and so we worked through that, and then, yeah, this year we've had motor issues yeah. left and right, uh, which is ridiculous. <laughs> right. Uh, it's super frustrating, I'm sure. Yeah. And there, again, you've got to be committed to want to get through it and right. uh, try and figure out what the issue was. And we had issues with multiple different motors and multiple different computers, all for kind of different reasons. Right. And... Uh, that's, yeah. that's challenging in and of itself. Yeah. yeah, and especially when you're trying to do a complete season, now you've got a deadline, which is right. usually only three-ish weeks away. Right, and it's a lot of pressure. So, yeah, it's a lot of pressure. Well, I'd, I'd say, like, so then, you know, rally cross, just, you know, whatever breaks, fix it. Maybe, but for the hill climbs, if you have some setup issues, just try and really focus on the setup. Mm -hmm. You know, like you're saying with the rear diff, but it's behaving erratically. Trying, you know, if you make a change and it doesn't yeah. do what you want it to do, try and figure out why, what you maybe need to do to balance it. But then once you get the stage yeah. rally, because the stakes are so high, especially running the whole season, right. it's just you've, you've got to be, you know, pretty much address whatever might come up yeah. as best and as quickly as you can. That's the nice thing about the hill climbs is early on we tried things like okay the this thing's pushing in a turn, yeah. I would need more traction up there, need to loosen up the rear a little bit, let's take the rear sway bar out and see what happens. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't work, you screw up one run that doesn't right. count anyways. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So we worked through that and as we did the diffs, it changed how the traction was on the car. So I went from no front sway bar to no sway bars to just a rear sway bar. Mm -hmm. and now I'm back to a front with no rear. And mm -hmm. so it's nice to be able to, to work on that. We're in a stage rally, every stage counts, right. and like you said, the stakes are so high, you don't want yeah. to make a big change, and now all of a sudden, half of your day is ruined. Right. Uh, so that's kind of why we stick with one stuff. So, and, so maybe then, I mean, the, the hill climbs, because of the format, it's a perfect scenario for testing. Yeah. Because if you are running the same road for the whole weekend, you can try different things, yeah. and if it doesn't work, you're, you're, it doesn't, it shouldn't penalize you so much that the whole weekend is, is ruined. So that, yeah. that probably really is the perfect place to test a bunch of stuff. Absolutely. And then, so you were saying, I mean, how much of your car's setup comes from your experience in going through the hill climbs? Did you kind of get pretty close to where the car is now by the time you were, you know, through a few hill climbs? Or, or did, yeah. you, did you have to really kind of develop it differently once you started doing stage rallies? No, we did most of it through the hill climb series. I think this year all we did was we put the center diff in, which made a huge difference. Transmission. Uh, transmission with those new gears. New yeah, gears. ZF design gives mm -hmm. a whole new transmission. Tighter gearbox that really helped. Yep. Um, better drive out of the turns. But other than that, I think almost everything else was we did in the hill climb yeah. series. So it was kind of like a really good testing arena to get the car sorted out. Yeah. You know, mostly so that when you went to stage rally, you knew where you were, you knew what the car was going to do, you knew what you were starting with, yeah. and then just small refinements from there. Yeah, another cool thing is the same road over and over again, and you yeah. have times for every run. Right. So you know exactly what's happening. Where stage rally, you get to the end. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Could I have been fast? You know, thanks very much for taking the time to sit down here and talk with us about it. Yeah. yeah. And Thank I you. can't wait for, for what next season is going to bring. Yeah, awesome. We will see. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, guys. And uh, 
and, and Dave, you got your own YouTube channel too. So if, if people want to see like Fly Guys and, and, and see what you're up to, what is that channel? Yeah, so if you just uh, Google Racer Dave, uh, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And we do uh, event videos for every single event, and we try and tell the story. So you, yeah, you can follow along there. Cool. Well, guys, thanks so much for coming out. Thanks for the time, and uh, thanks for watching.